The Market Square is a popular meeting place in Weimar. Many famous people were at home here. The Renaissance painters Lukas Kranach the Elder and Younger lived in this building. But it's mainly the classicists from Weimar that attract many visitors to come here. Now let's stroll a bit further. We in Weimar love to just amble along. Weimar is a city for pedestrians. The sites are close together. The architecture reflects the city's feudal days. This is Democracy Square. It used to be called Fürstenplatz or Duke's Square. That's very fitting because it's surrounded by royal buildings. There are the so-called red and yellow palaces, then the Fürstenhaus, where Duke Charles Augustus lived. And next to it is a small palace that's been a library for centuries. The Dowager Duchess Anna Amalia, whose name it bears, supported the library decisively. Many treasures are to be found here. And there's a first indication of Johann Wolfgang von Goethe's presence in the city. He ran the library for decades. Right next to it, the park on the Ilm was created in the 18th century. It's renowned for its valuable trees and architectural gems, like the ruins of the Templerenhaus. Goethe also played a part in designing the park. He spent his first years in Weimar in this house. Charles Augustus gave him this house as a gift because he wanted Goethe to stay in Weimar. As a homeowner, Goethe was eligible for citizenship of Weimar. And Charles Augustus was sure Goethe would remain in the city for a while. So he achieved his aim. After 1782, Goethe lived in this house on Frauenplan. Many of its rooms look the way they did in the last years of the poet's life. The study in which he wrote works such as Faust is unchanged. Goethe stayed in Weimar until his death in 1832. Part of its charm for Goethe was certainly that it wasn't too big, that it was manageable. It also provided him with a political sphere of activity, in addition to poetry and literature. Goethe's interests were many and varied. He was a poet, government official, dabbler in science and traveler. He wrote, For natures like mine, a journey is invaluable. It animates, corrects, instructs and develops. The composer Franz Liszt spent many summers in this house. Liszt had a close friendship with Grand Duke Charles Alexander. And the Grand Duke managed to get him to return to Weimar. And what's the best way to do that? Give him a house. Here, the celebrated musician taught young gifted pianists from all over Europe for free. Our next stop is the Bauhaus University. In 1919, the architect Walter Gropius founded the Bauhaus Art School in Weimar. In architecture, art and design, the school followed a clear formal vocabulary, free from the elements of historicism. And that's even visible in the Bauhaus University's hallways. But why did the avant-garde architect come to Weimar? Ultimately, Gropius came here because Goethe had been in Weimar, because it all began with that golden age. Not just Goethe and Schiller, but also Herder and Wieland, and he wanted to continue that tradition. The Bauhaus later did that in Dessau. The next stop is where Friedrich Schiller lived. An assembly brought Schiller and Goethe together. Goethe got into a conversation with Friedrich Schiller and was fascinated, so he invited Schiller to Weimar. From that moment, an intense creative association existed between them. Weimar classicism can be traced to the Dowager Duchess Anna Amalia, who lived in the widow's palace. 
She was a very well-educated and ambitious woman. She hosted illustrious social gatherings there. Among the guests were, of course, Goethe and Schiller, who now attract attention as a memorial in front of the National Theater. Here people sang and made such music that the angels in heaven were truly delighted. And I hope you've been delighted by our city tour through Weimar. Thank you for your attention and goodbye.